Hey everyone, it is February 15th and you are in the weekly community call for chaos. So welcome, welcome. I'm Elizabeth. I'm the community manager. I usually facilitate these meetings. Um, that's why I'm here. So um, great to see everybody. The minutes are in the chat there. If you wouldn't mind to add your name as an attendee, we would love that. Um, before we start, quick update on my Bengals. As you know, if you're in the US, they lost. So sad. However, if you're a longtime Bengals fan like myself, you're used to it. We've never won. We, we may never win, but at least we made it that far. So well, congratulations. Uh, hope springs <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, the calls in the last two minutes were just wrong. I'm just going <laughs> to say, I'm just going to say that as a neutral person in this whole fight. <laughs> Uh, it's all good. You know what? We, we still love them. And now we're even more excited about next year. So um, you won't have to listen to me complaining or mentioning the Bengals until this time next year. So thanks for supporting me, everyone, in my journey. All right. I'm going to share my screen so we can get to it. All right. Uh, first item on the list is an update on the DEI working group. And I will turn this over to Matt G. Yeah, so thanks. Um, right now we're working on a, just a variety of metrics. I think the one uh, that is most mm, like easiest for us to work on right now is project demographics. We have an event demographics metric that was released a while ago and we're using uh, that as a template to start working on event demographics. So from a metrics perspective, we're developing new metrics uh, as well as, you know, kind of revisiting some of our ones that were released in the past. Um, I think we spent a lot of time recently talking about our own onboarding practices within the chaos project and just what we can do in that regard. And um, so that's been that's been really productive. Elizabeth and, I, you know, I think Elizabeth and Ruth have been doing the the office hours a couple times a week. Um, there's been some discussion about maybe even splitting up the office hours that came kind of came in a different call, but having them in two different times so we can be more globally inclusive. Um, so I think just a lot of effort has been spent on on our general onboarding and newcomer experience and kind of working through complex questions. So that's really the update from the DEI working group. Thanks, Matt. Anybody have questions for Matt? All right, we'll move on. Um, next week, we were hoping to get an update on the value working group. Vinod, is that okay? Will you be here next week? Yep, I'll be here. I will take away okay. the question mark. You have confirmed your participation. Cool, okay, so the next item is the GSOC reminder. We're in the process of gathering ideas. Um, here's a link to the repo if you have ideas. Um, here's how to do it uh, also is probably a helpful thing, which we could probably change that to 2022. Um, but basically we're just collecting ideas in this repo and I did uh we did have one idea that i merged in sean i hope that's okay yeah okay yeah of course yeah okay. i yeah, mean it wasn't I mean, my idea i just did the merging so no no no. it's uh totally exactly the way it's supposed to work perfect we have many maintainers oops now i'm okay here we go um that was an idea brought up by matt Cantu. so thank you matt and there it is if you're looking for um an example of something that could be an idea. Here is one. Could this be a similar idea to what you're talking about with Ruth? For the... uh, it's a little different. Um, this is more of okay. like the event badging. So like the bot that like- Oh, you know, oh we gotcha. And stuff like that. Um, yeah. Okay, fine, got it. Um, and just for those who are wondering what the timeline is, here's the timeline from Google. Um, so we're, you know, not there yet, but that's what it is. Yeah, so we, we, will... we have already applied. And so the, the place that we're in is populating this ideas document. Um, 
that's that's the place that we're in. I, I've got it on my list to put in some auger stuff this week. Uh, and I think I, I think Grimoire Labs aware and we're having um, right, I'll get to this at the end. But yeah, I think I think we're on track. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Sean, was there anything in the org application that was missing or that you needed? No, Georg had a like very placeholders. Georg okay. had a, no, Georg had a nicely organized document from prior years, and I basically used that. Okay, we are still doing the same stuff, but better. Okay, <laughs> and there's nothing that's changed that like needs new. There's no, no. new fields really or anything no, like that. No, every single field on that form was covered in the doc that Georg used last year. Okay, right on. Awesome. Okay. Um, any questions so, for Sean? Yeah, maybe we should make sure that the folks too with Grimoire Lab also know that we need ideas. I don't know that we need them exactly by the time the deadline closes for GSOC at Google, because because our ideas are living in a repository. Right. You know what I mean? It's not actually part of the application process, but we might want to ping them just on like Slack or even just directly like Daniel. Yeah, that's, yeah, I guess with Georg out, we don't necessarily have a Grimoire Lab person in these meetings. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, um, I'll ping, I'll ping Daniel real quick right now. Okay. Um, anything else on GSOC stuff? Okay, let's move on. Uh, this is just a reminder. We would love to have a photo of you um, or your dog or uh, really anything, your NFT. No, we probably couldn't include that. that <laughs> I don't even know what that would look like. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so weird. Anyway, sorry. I'm showing my age now because I just think stuff like that is just weird. But <laughs> okay. um, we are compiling a big mural of all of our community people. If you are brand new, if this is your very first meeting, we don't care. You're still part of us now. You're a chaotic. We would love to have you included in our mural. So if you want to know what we're looking for and how to do it, uh, where, to, where to put it, um, there's a link here. And that was just my original post uh, to the mailing list, which you can also join if you're not a member of our mailing list. Um, Here's the stuff. So it's supposed to be the deadline today. If you if you're working on it, just let me know. It's fine because I'm probably not going to start the mural today. Just as a you know, I'm going to be honest. I probably won't. I probably won't even start it for a few days. Maybe this weekend. I don't know. So you got time. But we would love to have you part of that. Um, and we're going to probably put that on the website somewhere. We don't know where. Um, but yeah, because chaos is five, and we want to include everybody. So uh, questions on that. Okay, awesome. We'll move on then. We are just plowing through the agenda. I love that. All right, DEI event toolkits. Well, you did them. that. I did do that. <laughs> so I Thank put it on there. Much. Yeah, you're all welcome. I did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, are we just, should I just share this with everybody, Matt? I don't know. Yeah, and just know. kind of what the premise is behind them and all that, and maybe a okay. little bit of the history, you know? Sure. Okay. So um, in the metrics models working group, that is a um, group that meets later on today or tomorrow morning if you're in Asia Pacific time. Um, it, what that group aims to do is pull other metrics together, pull our, our individual or our atomic metrics together into bundles that people can use to build context around a problem they're trying to solve, a question they're trying to answer. So. Um, we uh, talk about how to bring these models or these metrics together in different ways. The DEI badging initiative that we have for events has been doing this. So um, what, what the end result was, was to try to give people who want to use these metrics an easy way to do this and a quick um, kind of summary of how to do this. Because if you look at our list of metrics, uh, we look at this in the newcomers um, channel and in office hours, it's like literally 200 pages of our PDF of metrics. And so it's, it's hard to digest and hard to know like what, what you should do. 
So we, we have this idea of toolkits. Um, I think Matt also linked to the original, uh, oh, I thought. No, I just put one in a. Oh, 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 oh okay. I put one in a temple, like made it look nice. Whoops, okay. I don't look oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is, this is what it would look like if we, you know, mm -hmm. if we were going to put that together. Which that's kind of cool, Matt. I like it. Well, oh, I'm getting there. All right. <laughs> yeah. Showing my, my Photoshop skills. <laughs> Work in progress is totally fine. <laughs> so this right now is screen. just a word. But the idea is to, yeah, put, take this information that's in this doc and put it into something pretty and digestible that people can just quickly see. So what I've done is taken our DEI badging looked at the different sections. So like the first one is event demographics. So here's the action somebody would take, develop a process for measuring demographics, for speakers and attendees at your event, why it matters. Like, and that's, I'm pulling some of this from the metrics we've already developed. Um, what type of event applies to, how much time it would take. I'm just guessing like that could be wrong. And that's something that we will iterate on as people are putting these in practice and giving us feedback. Um, again, implementation difficulty, it's kind of intermediate because it's a little tricky. Um, checklist for implementation. So here's the things that you would do. If you want to do this action, here's the things that you would do or make sure that, you know, you're keeping in mind. And then a link to the metric where this information was pulled and for more context. So that, that right there is, I don't know what we are calling it, a module of a toolkit. I don't know what the name of that is, would be, um, but all of these things together would be the toolkit for centering DEI in your open source event. And it's it's based on the DEI badging initiative. And I hope that makes sense. But if it does not, please tell me. Makes sense to me. Yeah, so I think the, when I was taking a look at this, like just kind of going through it, um, it is really easy to read and really easy to understand. Um, We'll have to talk maybe in the metrics model working group about kind of like this is a lot this is a lot of like really how to implement this toolkit or in this case really this metric model for for open source or, um, uh, dei in your open source event and so we'll have to think about just how to present a metrics model that could be kind of high level like here are some things that you need to think about for a particular thing, whatever that that model might be. And this one, this is has really specific ways of implementing the metrics model. So I, that was just something that I was thinking about as something we're going to need, need to sort out. That's all. So like we could have a, a metrics model like we've been working on. If I bring up the spreadsheet, um we have metrics models around sorry just taking a look here really fast but like um burnout risk or issue handling or code development and right now those models they're kind of high level yeah thank you and they um they just kind of say like issue handling like here are some metrics that you should think about if you care about issues in your project. We don't really go into detail about how to implement those particular metrics. You know what I mean? So like row uh, 13 right there, yeah. Like we just kind of provide this high level why you should care, metrics that are in the model, and that's about it. I think Versus that's okay because the toolkit would be something different, right? It, I think it is. So I guess I, I, what, what, what do you see the relationship being? So I see like the, the, the metrics model being the, the thing that we would link to for more context go here. Okay. And then you would have maybe a tool a toolkit for me or like under the toolkit, you would maybe have like a module for each of these things. Maybe. Cause that's what you, no. that, yeah, that's right. That's exactly what you were providing. Like yeah. with the, the toolkit, it's really specific on yeah. implementation. 
which is super good. I mean, I'm yeah, not. I think I'm just trying to we think were, about how they link. Yeah. How they link together. Yeah. So we would have to figure out like how to pull the yeah instead of just maybe singling them out. Like, how do you make a graph? Or how do you like layer them on top of each other or things like that? Like, how do you pull them together to, yeah. to provide context? Yeah. That, so that's going to be something we have to sort out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause otherwise maybe the, than just the atomic metrics, like. Right. Exactly. But list. you're giving like really detailed information on how to do the implementation, but we kind of do have that in the metric itself. So. Yeah. We'll have to think about that. Yeah. Think about it. All right. If you want to join that meeting, anybody who wants to join that meeting, it is uh, today at seven o'clock my time. I don't know what that is for anyone else, literally. It's 6 p.m. U.S. Central Chicago time. Uh -huh. yep. So yeah, you'll have to do the, do the math in your heads because I cannot. Um, anybody have questions or comments on this real quick before we move along? Yeah, I mean, the, the question would be for me, is, I'm sorry, I, we can talk about this in the model meeting. So, but the question is, is like for the, for the metrics models that are an assemblage of metrics, how much guidance do we continue to provide on deploying those models. I guess uh, uh, re real quick, I'd like to make a comment if I can. Go. So I, uh, I like the idea of the toolkits, uh, but I think this is actually a step, it's a step uh, beyond the, the models. I think the, the toolkits are, are, are possibly the, uh, the, the applications that uh, that start to uh, that we start to create based on the, the models that we're creating. So for me, it's kind of it's a progression that maybe it's the next step, but we're not necessarily there yet. Uh, and the uh, one way that we can continue to kind of uh, build these toolkits or or maybe build a platform to to build these toolkits and kind of uh, place them uh, in uh, near the models would be to uh, create a kind of a, a knowledge base, a metrics knowledge base on the website, which was, is a, I think that was a term that Elizabeth has used at one point. So uh, in, a, in a searchable, a searchable metrics knowledge base, we would, we can create those connections between the metrics, the models we create, and then the applications. And I think the, I think the toolkit is an application and not necessarily a model. So I think the model is more of an observation uh, and kind of a exploration of the relationship hmm. between metrics. At least that's kind of how I see it anyway. So, so, so I, I, I think we're on the right track with it. I think it's just, I think it's the next step and maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. I, I think, well, I mean, the metrics models group is building Jupyter notebooks that use Augur data to actually show the models in action and i think and i've been talking with daniel Iscardo at grimoire lab about collaborating on putting together worked examples of, of in their case kibana dashboards in our case jupyter notebooks or some other presentation of chaos metrics organized according to the way the metrics models are defined and i think i think this is an important next step to chaos having you you know sustained utility for for the software the open source software community so I, I think it is something we have to you know and i'm working you know i've got a little agenda item at the end but i think i do think it's important that we have a place for people to see uh the expression of a model even if in the metrics models depository that's a a pdf of an output that points them to a software directory or points them to a place where they can retrieve those for their repositories. And I, and I agree with that completely. I just think with, in these discussions uh, to avoid confusion, I think we really need to be clear when we're, are we talking about models or are we talking about app, an application? Uh, because I, I think we get, 
I think we get sidetracked by that sometimes. Well, I think I okay. My counterpoint, I I agree with you. I think I think it's hard for people to understand what a model is if they don't see an example. Overall, this is helpful to me. So thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, that discussion will be continued at the other meeting. <laughs> um, yeah. We can skip the point six then too. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's go to the dot GitHub thing. I'm guessing that was you, German Price. <laughs> see this. That is me. So <laughs> we're, we're, obviously playing around with adding the .github folder to the org. Um, so we can, we can add this logo to the org and we can add some text below. Um, Don had provided a nice example a while back. The only problem I have with this is it looks bad on dark mode because it's whether it's a white background, it just shows up as a big white rectangle, you know, with chaos in there, or, um, or it's if I use a PNG, you know, then it it's black text on a black background. So I don't know if people have thoughts on that, or just not even using the chaos logo. It's just it's a it's a really easy way for us to just at the chaos org, yeah, kind of sh show something that is more than just the list of repos. Like That's what good. Don had Don had provided from VMware was a really nice set of text about like joining the community, like how to get involved. I really really like that. So where's uh, what's the link to that? And I'll pull it up here. It's a uh, github.com slash VMware. Yeah. Oops. I can type. I know how to. Sorry, good guys. <laughs> I always hate typing in front of other people for the same reason. <laughs> I just expect it to auto finish for me. It should know what I'm trying to do. Come on. <laughs> so, this is lovely. And I noticed theirs would probably work on both backgrounds, you know, maybe. Um, but it's really lovely. Welcome, finding your way, get started. How, how awesome is that? And then we go into the pinned and repositories. You know, so Matt, it might be better if we just used a smaller chaos logo. Like it might be less overwhelmingly like a white block on dark background. Mm -hmm. If we just make, we could just make it smaller. I could do that. Yeah, I mean, I just plopped in the one I had so I could definitely play around with the size a little bit. I think it's definitely an improvement over this. And I'm glad they can <laughs> do that now, you know, because you come here and it's like, what? I don't even know what I'm just doing. 45 repositories. Yeah, do the I work. Get, yeah. get to work. <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot we can do to help newcomers, especially using yeah. something like this to just help point people in a direction that makes sense. Yeah, this is beautiful. I mean, in our case, you can see one of the one of the challenges we have is that um, we have over 70 orgs, GitHub orgs. Um, and so we point people to some of the key ones and we use this to do that because they land on the VMware one and they're like, well, where is Spring or Salt or any of the other things that we, um, any of the other big open source projects that we run. So it's nice to be able to just point people to the things that we think they're looking for. Yeah, that's great. Good job there, Don. Oh yeah, so not me. <laughs> Zan Ambiel, <laughs> if you know her from any of the conferences, uh, she's fabulous and I'm pretty sure she did that. <laughs> maybe Elizabeth, you and I can come up with some text and maybe okay. just playing around with the sample, this test org that we have here. Yeah. Show folks. Okay. Let's do that action item, Elizabeth. Oops. Yeah, thanks for doing that, Matt. That looks great. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I can say that. Um, yeah, I actually did 
yeah anyway it's interesting it's 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 really pretty cool and i see justin's and some comments in chat um okay cool um all right so should we move on okay yeah. privacy regulation associated with chaos metrics let's take a look at this so this is this document is moving along really quite nicely and so it's just um it's more just bringing this to people's attention that this is coming along quite well and this for those who don't know what this is um so in each of our metrics we have a statement <laughs> that just makes people aware of the fact that there could be some like sensitive information in, in the metrics and like how they handle that data and um you know, access it and, and get it is, um, could be, you know, you, there might be legal considerations. So we're trying to just help people in the use of these metrics to guide them, at least to find, like, we're not trying to be the lawyers here. We're just trying to point people to the right places so that they can help educate themselves and do the right thing. So this will be one document and then all the metrics will link to this document. Do I understand all that correctly? I think so. Oh, I yeah, so that, yeah, so the question would be is where do we, yeah, must central doc, yeah, so Sophia, yeah, so I think the question is where does this land finally? That's a good question. We talked about I think we've had this, yeah, I think it's in the yeah. community repo. just generally somewhere or in yeah yep sophia's agreeing with that yeah just generally in there <laughs> we could put we could make a new folder called like privacy or I something see. like that that makes sense okay cool thanks everyone uh should it be added so not the hand yeah not the handbook probably not the handbook we could i don't know Okay, but we'll the hope is, is oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, we'll think on that, but go ahead. Yeah, I think we can talk about it in the common call as this as this document is kind of coming to closure, mm -hmm. I think, I feel like yeah. that we could maybe talk about that in common this week. Yeah, I think we can close it. I mean, there's some things that need to be filled in yet. I looked at it yesterday or the day before, I don't remember, but but I think it's coming along nicely. Yep. Hey. Justin, what is that? Something for docs beyond Markdown? Yeah, just I mean, um, like having something that might have better organization and table of contents and and organization for that content oh. might be really nice. Um, just so gotcha. it's easier to navigate and find and discover. Um, so maybe something like what we have for the community handbook. But I get what you're saying. The right spot. Yeah, just some, just something else. I gotcha. Point well taken. Thanks. Maybe also into that like knowledge base, more of a knowledge base approach, like Kevin was mentioning earlier, where some of the stuff can be um, surfaced a little easier. Which, by the way, I am I am proposing that work uh, over the summer when we do we're doing some kind of web website revamping. Uh, so I am proposing uh, kind of a, a knowledge base addition to the website, and uh, I'm going to try to do a, a Google Summer of Code project on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So the handbook is definitely something that could be included or integrated into that. So. Um, OK, well, that is a fantastic segue. Thank you, Kevin. Um, also into the handbook, talking about a process or place where we reflect on it, because we don't have that. No, this has come up a few times. Like, remember the <laughs> Elizabeth, you had the experience where you were looking for descriptions of the different roles, I think, within the community. And you're like, we should write a document on that. And then you're like, oh, we actually have that document <laughs> it's in the handbook. So <laughs> yeah, right? I didn't even know. And, it was I mean, 
Yeah, and Josh Carrad did an amazing job on the handbook. I think it was Google Season of Docs. Yep. And I just, I feel like it just kind of, I know it's on the website and all that, kind of, like you can get to it from there, but I just feel like we don't really talk about it much and it's just kind of hangs out there. <laughs> so I don't... I've, like I've used, I've used it to determine whether or not a metric needs to go through full review during our review period. There's some good guidelines in there and, and I know where to look, but I don't, ref so I refer to it like I refer to a dictionary or a, like a reference document. I don't know yeah, if I that's just the like, intended use or there's a larger intended use. No, I mean, that would be the intended use, but I just feel like it's an asset that just kind of drifts through <sighs> through the project. That's all. Yeah. I feel like it exists kind of outside of our normal collaboration spaces. And, and that's that's what causes some problems for me. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I think I think he did a really great job as well. Uh, but but we don't use Gitbook for anything else. Uh, so there's not really consistent work being done on that in that platform or a reason to go to that platform on a regular basis. I wonder we if don't we really. Oh, go ahead. Pages. I was just gonna say, I wonder if we could link to some of the pages from other logical places on the website or to repost to help people help people find maybe sections mm -hmm. of the handbook that are particularly relevant to other work. Because I, like you guys, I I just don't think to look in it. Mm -hmm. And I will say this comes up. Uh, it's come up several times in the office hours. It came up to, again today. We asked, Enoch asked about the path to leadership. And I was like, oh, I think that's in the handbook. So we went there and it was, but it's buried, you know, and you have to know that that's what you're looking for. And so, yeah, it was like the discoverability, I think, is a, is a challenge. And we don't really have to to Kevin's point yet. Yeah, we don't really have like an an owner of it now um, since Jess Crutt moved on. And so if there are issues in the repo, like I don't even know if there's PRs. I don't I don't know. Like nobody's really managing that. So should that be me? Like, should I be doing, should I have been doing Maybe. that this whole time? <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> Sorry. no, Maybe you and I can can take a look at it. I, I've been wanting to take a look at the content, but I also like Don's point of maybe just trying to find like points of connection for say the working groups, like what might the working groups care? <laughs> like, you know, um, even just in the spreadsheet, we could link to the metrics release process. So that's available. So when you're looking at the spreadsheet, it's just sitting right there for you as an example. And there's probably other ways to link like that. We can, it, in, the, uh, in the website revamp, we could, we could try to link to it through, through an online knowledge base, I suppose. Uh, so that, we could, uh, that could be one of the, uh, the key things we do in that. And then um, in the meantime, I will look, uh, I will look actually at the repo and see what's what, try to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, um, maybe to add into the, the handbook, when we're in the office hours with um, Elizabeth, I actually realized that the handbook is just so detached from um, very many other information uh, bits that could be attached to the pro to, 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 to the whole chaos community documents. And the only way you can access it is actually you either navigate through the website and you go to that um, drop down menu and click handbook or someone else sends you a link that, hey, actually what you're looking for could be good from the handbook here. So to me, I found those that the only two ways you can actually access the handbook. If it's not that, then you do not know where it is. Yet I've also seen that actually the handbook has a lot of information that actually when someone has access to it, um, there are very many things that will be clarified um, that are already in one central place whereby they will not need to be moving around. So I think the integration between the handbook and the website would be good and um, accessing it made easier, like linking to it more than any other place, um, putting it where it is actually easily accessible instead of um, someone else having to post you a link about something that you want to find out. 
Yeah, we also um, discovered that the search doesn't quite like the search on the website now doesn't really transfer over to the search within the community handbook. Um, so I'm sure Kevin, like what you said, it, it'll be more integrated, I think, with the new website, but yeah. One of the other one of the other issues is uh, uh, some of the some of the documents within the handbook are old. Uh, and there was there's some replication in those documents. Uh, so I know we we've updated the uh, the release process multiple times since that handbook was created, and I have never updated. I don't. I actually don't know how to update the the handbook. I'm uh, I'm not sure I have access to that. So, uh, so we do have we have uh, we have documents where we've outlined the process that maybe aren't in the aren't in the handbook. And this is to Solana's point, I think, in the chat. Like, what's the single source of truth? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. The project, which which we've we've talked about before, wanting to create the documents in the community repo and just point point to them from other places. Uh, so we yeah we definitely need to uh, reduce replication and redundancy in our documents so that uh, we make sure the the documents that are the truth are the, the ones we're pointing to. Uh, and in the handbook, I observed like there are links to the GitHub repo, which we are updating regularly. So maybe like we are updating the GitHub and the links remain the same and handbook is in a way then updated by itself. Like I see a metric definition, metric template. So as we update the template, the link is still remains the same and handbook will point to the user on the template or things like these. So, so we maybe need like, this is a good resource uh, and as said, we can just monitor and update it at the same time. Salona so had suggested maybe a, a, some sort of regularly scheduled time where we can actually just do just this. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, we maybe not weekly or bi-weekly, maybe it's a monthly or bi-monthly thing. I don't think it would be something we need to do as frequently as so one said twice a year. Maybe, maybe at, uh, around that's... like release time, since like during the public comment period, we, we kind of stop working on, on, on metrics and the working groups. Mm -hmm. So maybe that could be, you know, in line with that yeah. maybe is this a thing for common or we we keep just shoving things together. yeah if it's <laughs> common can do it it's fine common, yeah, yeah common <laughs> I, I have thought about that <laughs> don's just gonna we'll, we'll just give it to don <laughs> it is it is sort of the land of misfit things common, common working group. um although i Kevin, did you say something about like the? Do we have like a website working group or like a? Yeah, we do that. We do that in common. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, it wasn't. So we we have a. So there actually is a web content group, uh, and we were we've been handling a lot of kind of the the community activities. So the the metrics release has been part of that. We've done template work. Uh, but it's an informal group. There's really just a, uh, a few of us. Uh, we we had monthly meetings at one time, uh, but we'll say there was lack of interest. So uh, only one person would show up to those. Um, uh, I came we, sometimes. I came a few times too. Sorry, Kevin. That's all it's right. Uh, so so due to lack of interest, we we stopped having those meetings. Uh, so I think the uh, when we started moving some of the community stuff into common, uh, uh, I'm a little bit. I, I thought about bringing some of the, at the very least, some of the decision making into that group. So not asking anyone to do any extra work, but maybe it's a space where we could discuss decisions made about the the content or the design of the website or things of that nature. So without without loading everyone in that group with extra work. 
Okay. So in the meantime, I'll, I'll take the action item to kind of just keep an eye on that repo. Cause I know there's a repo out there somewhere. Um, and just make sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, I think it's handbook. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if that's it. Nope. Okay. Well, I'll find it. I know it's out there somewhere. All right. Any final thoughts before we move on? We got seven minutes. No. We're doing Thank good. You. Okay. Thanks, Matt, for bringing that up. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Sean, I'm guessing, who put this on here. Update on software contributors in chaos. Just that uh, Grimoire Lab and Augur um, are having, just having conversations about how we can collaborate on really things like the metrics models and providing concrete implementations and developing more of a software contributor community within chaos. We think the metrics models, you know, collectively, I think we think the metrics models provide an opportunity for, for chaos to provide tools that are, that reflect those models and are, I don't know, I don't want to say easy to access because neither of our toolkits are easy, um, but certainly we're, you know, both projects are working in that direction. And so we're, we're discussing ways to collaborate directly uh, in the interests of the overall chaos project. And so that's with very initial stages, but that's one of the things that we said we wanted to do this year. And I just wanted to update everyone that, you know, we're, we're working on it. I don't have any concrete things to report. I think it's great. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, agreed. All right. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, we no will problem. check back in with you. Sorry, I'm brief. Yeah, I, there's a... No, you're there, fine. I just sent it out. Yeah, I think our next meeting will be sometime in the next week or two. So I don't know if I'll have anything to report next Tuesday, but possibly by the Tuesday after that, depending on the results of my doodle poll. Okie dokie. All right. Finally, on number 11, we have website redesign. Yeah, maybe redesign. Well... Kevin, Kevin and I, and you, Elizabeth, we're going to be taking retaking, taking a relook at the website, really starting in summer. Uh, so if anybody has an interest in that, that would be great. Um, I think we're also looking for somebody who does graphic design work. So if anybody happens to know anybody in this, that's great. Um, when I was working on that stuff this morning, I'm like, oh, this is easy. And then you showed it on... <laughs> The screen Elizabeth and it, <laughs> it's like oh okay actually maybe we do need to hire somebody so uh, yeah Stephen Jacobs at RIT actually has a graphic design group well I mean if, if it's somebody that we can work with I mean we yeah. have the funds to support that work and it's it's not yeah. it, it would be some some web work I think we also want some stuff on some of our templates like the metrics models we also there's been a request for some work around um, Twitter banners for releasing work there. So um, anyway, yeah, branding stuff. Yeah. Does yeah. the Linux design. have any resources, design resources for us? They, option? they did when we started. I could reach out to them. My concern is that, um, that there's so many projects that they might be really overworked. That would be my, that's my one concern. And we do have the funds through some of the grants to support an individual here. It might just be easier and faster to yeah. go that route. But worth asking the Linux Foundation. Um, the, other, the other thing is they might have people who already, that they tend to contract yep. with, that we could contract with, they're, they're already familiar with, I don't know. I get what you're saying. Visual stuff yep. that the Linux Foundation does, things I don't understand. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy to reach out to Brian. The worst thing I can say is no. Exactly. So um, one of the things that we're doing on our stuff is we are letting the volunteers have a lot of help, doing a lot of different help. Now, they don't get to do the website redesign because we have too many things that are like trademarked and all blah, blah, blah. Um, but we are working on tools for making it easier for each of those groups to be able to come in and do the website pieces and update the different pieces and, and doing things of that nature. <coughs> um, 
do you all know what tools and stuff you've already set up for the volunteers and, you know, breaking out the website tasks and all that. I think that would be um, helpful in regards to getting your volunteers going on that. Do you see what I'm saying? I do. And we haven't thought about that. So, <laughs> uh, so the, the website is, the, <laughs> web that in there, but <laughs> the website is mostly populated with content from, from Markdown. Mm -hmm. uh, so content creation can be, can be created on the, in our GitHub repo in, right. in Markdown fairly easily. Uh, and then from a, uh, from a design standpoint, I think the, the best way to, uh, get volunteers to contribute to that would probably be, be the construction of a, kind of a, a branding uh, or design handbook. And I think that would probably be, and then from that handbook, the uh, it's easy to apply those, those concepts and those images to the website. So uh, without, without giving a bunch of people access to WordPress, I, I think there is room for uh a lot of volunteers to contribute or many volunteers to contribute yeah because what we did is we're using um gatsby so that the volunteers can each have um so each um working uh, advisory group as we have to call them over there um can basically have control over their own section of the website. And that's one of the things that we're going through and configuring now, literally, is so that, you know, they can go in and put in all their information and do all that. There's just not a lot of design stuff that they actually get to do. Um, but we are trying to set it up so that all the other projects can have control over that. Um, so FYI. Is that just content? It's so control, just control over content or? Mm -mm. it's not just content we're doing um we are doing a certain amount of design but we are doing templates in regards to it so that they they know what they can and can't change so that they can add stuff in there and make it a little bit more graphic trust me i can't do my marketing and design people and not give them that okay <laughs> they're gonna get pissy with me if they don't get to do some of the stuff in their way um but yeah so yeah we're going a little bit beyond just you know, breaking out of the get book kind of thing. But like you said, it's a hard part because of the whole WordPress portion. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not opposed to giving people access to WordPress. Uh, just probably mm -hmm. not a, just not a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for ours, we get to have it somewhat segmented, right? So it's a little bit easier, but yeah. Uh, All right. Well, thank you both, everyone, actually. Thanks, everybody, for coming. We are out of time today. Um, so we'll close this meeting out, and uh, we will see you here next week, same time, same place. Have a great day, everybody. Right. See you later. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.